we have 15 minutes left. And what I'd like to do um, is uh, talk about something that a lot of people ask about, assuming we have no more questions. Okay, cool. Um, and this is free memberships. So what I wanna go over is first talk about the value of free memberships. Why would you use them versus not using them? Um, and then show you a number of methods you can use to allow people to sign up for free memberships. So the first thing is why, why would you use free memberships? Um, so <clears throat> commonly what, what we will do in marketing is we'll set up um, a new um, email opt-in, right? So people will opt into our email list um, so that we can get them into some sort of funnel. We can send them emails over a period of time, uh, which is all great. Um, and we want to keep doing that. But if at the same time, when they just sign up, they're added to the email list and they're also have an account created within our membership site, then people are are the, the perceived value of what they've actually just signed up for is a lot higher. You know, if we're gonna be offering them, re showing them resources through our email communications, why not put them in a portal where they can log in and access everything um, all at once? You know, it, it raises the value of the thing you're offering. Also the engagement, is a lot higher with people who are a part of a membership site than people who are just receiving emails. The other benefit is when somebody is a member in your membership site, utilizing member mouse smart tags, you can detect who that person is, um, how long they've been a member with you, you know, in, the, in this situation, um, they may not have purchased anything, but if they have purchased something, you'll know if they've purchased it or not. So you basically, when people are on a free membership, you basically have them in an area where you have the opportunity to dynamically put messaging in front of them using member mouse smart tags. So when you install member mouse, uh, if I go to product settings, there will be a default memberships um, level installed uh, by default. Um, and so if I click on the purchase links for this and copy this static link here, and I open up an incognito window to go purchase this item, this will take us to also the default checkout page. Now, the checkout page um, dynamically will adjust itself based on what's being purchased or signed up for. So you see here that when I put that link in to, to sign up for free membership level, it only displays to me this relevant information. Website information is, um, this is a custom field, wouldn't be here in a default instance. <clears throat> And then you can specify which one of these things you may not want because they're all not required. But for, 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 for a point of contrast, um, let me show you if I want to purchase this annual membership level. Uh, I will also copy the static link, go back to my incognito window. And you'll notice it's also taking us to the same checkout page but member mouse will dynamically detect, okay, this is actually something that requires a payment. So not only it will um, ask for account information, but it will ask for billing information, et cetera, coupon code, whatever. So this is out of the box. This is um, all set up for you and people can then sign up for this free membership level. Now, like I said, if you're gonna have somebody sign up for anything, you know, you might as well, like an email list, you might as well have them sign up for a free membership level because this way, now they have somewhere they can log into. Now they have somewhere where they can access any content that you're gonna be giving them. The perceived value is higher and you're not losing anything because when we go to email settings, um, 
you know, you, in, currently I'm integrated with MailChimp. You can specify which mailing list on MailChimp people who sign up for that membership level should be added to. So you get, you personally are still adding them to your email funnel, but at the same time, you're getting the benefit of adding them to your membership site. So, um, <clears throat> The next thing is like, so on this point, let's say that we want to have a specific membership level that's for prospects. These are people who may sign up for some free ebook that we're offering, some free mini course or something like that. And we wanna be able to distinguish them specifically. So I'm gonna to go to product settings and I'm gonna to go to membership levels and I'll do create membership level, and I'm gonna call this prospects. And that's this is a free membership level. Um, you know, we can send them a welcome email that would go here. I'm just gonna turn it off for, because this is a, a demo thing. Um, so now we see our new prospects membership level here. Now, I'm gonna go over to email settings and I will see my new membership level here, prospects. And I'm gonna say that I want, when people sign up for this membership level, I want them to be put on the prospects mailing list inside of MailChimp. And I'll go ahead and save that setting. <clears throat> so now when anybody signs up the prospects membership level, they will be automatically signed up in member mouse and they'll automatically be added to this mailing list in MailChimp, which would then trigger any automated emails that you would have. Okay, so now there's a number of ways that you can get people to sign up for this membership level. Um, I already showed you one of them, which is just come to purchase links and copy the link. So you can send that link to people. Right, and that'll take them to their default checkout page. But in a lot, in a lot of cases, you know, you want something a little bit more, um, something that could be maybe embedded into um, a blog post or something that can be um, in a sidebar of your site, or even something that's not on your site at all. Maybe you write a guest post on a on somebody else's blog, and you want to include the free membership sign up for your site on their blog. So I'm gonna show you how to accomplish both of those things. So if you're gonna be doing it on any pages on your site, the best way to do that is using the checkout form. Um, now I'm gonna to need to go to a support article to get, um, and I'll type in free member checkout form because this will give me the exact uh, smart tags that I need to accomplish this. So I just, <clears throat> at the top of that article, there was a download source code button. So I just click that and I will go ahead and copy this. And now I'll go back here and I will create a page <clears throat> and I'm going to say this is my um, prospect sign up. <clears throat> and go ahead and paste that in. So when I do this, um, this is basically just creating another checkout form where people can sign up. So I can, I'm going to remove this text. So I can do this. Um, but at this point, this checkout form is going to expect that I pass a membership level ID to the page. So it knows what membership level is signing up for, but I know that I just want people um, whenever people come to the sit page, I want them to sign up for the prospect, um, 
membership level. So if I go to our support center again, Okay, and I'm just looking at the, the documentation for the checkout uh, form smart tag. And what I wanna do is I wanna provide a specific membership level ID. So I go back here, type in membership level ID equals, put my quotes in there, and then I need to figure out what the prospect membership level ID is. It's um, 12, put a 12 in there and I'll publish this. Okay, so now I'll um, copy this link address, open an incognito window, go to this page, prospect sign up. So um, I have test data set up on my site, so that's why it just pre-populates everything for me, which is really useful when you're developing. Um, just makes everything quicker. You don't have to constantly type things in. But you see here now, I have a prospect sign-up form. Now, this form, by the way, um, you could have been, now, here's the thing. I have PayPal and uh, credit card set up on the site, but there's no point in having a PayPal button on a free member signup form, right? So, so let's let's fix that, right? So first of all, label wouldn't be submit order. Um, and again, I'm gonna go to my support thing and I'm gonna look up the um, form smart. Uh, the form button smart tag. <clears throat> so I'm going to say this is a submit button type and the label is going to be sign up and the payment method is going to be default. All right, so now let me update that. <clears throat> Go back to my incognito way to refresh. Oops. So when I do this, I need to put um, put this in an href. And there's there's a whole article that outlines all these steps that I'm talking about, um, which may be easier than this, but um, just so um, I can show you. Okay, so now I sign up. Um, and if I go to our manage members screen, we can see that that new member was added to our prospect membership level. So, um, now the benefit again of doing this is that, for example, I can put, this could be this, this code or these smart tags could be put anywhere, right? You can put this, you know, on a blog post, there could be any number of texts before and after. Um, so you can pretty much put it wherever you want and you can style it any way you want. So in doing this, you can add um, free member signup forms wherever you need to on your site. So, you know, you can see it can be embedded. And again, I'm not styling anything. I'm just showing you functionally how this works. 
but of course you would want to, you know, this is just pure vanilla HTML. You'd want to make it look good. Um, but your theme would automatically do some work for you in this regard. Um, okay. So now the next thing is say that you want to do this on a guest blog, like say that you've written an article on somebody else's blog and they say it's okay for you to put a, a, a sign up form on their blog for your membership level. So you're not going to be able to use these smart tags because this, these, this is a something that only member mouse understands. So you're going to use this on pages on your site, but if you want to do something on somebody else's site, uh, we go to member mouse web forms. <clears throat> and we're on free member web form here. And then we just specify, okay, well, we're going to create a form and which membership level do we want to sign up for? Well, we want to sign up for the prospects one. And then we specify what information we want to collect. And I'm just going to say first name and email is all we want, right? So then I click generate HTML and then I go ahead and copy this. And then I would just send this, put this, embed this in my blog post that I'm writing for the other person. Right. So if I'm, you know, on their site and I'm doing a guest blog post and, um, <clears throat> you know, I have all my article content, whatever. And then I say, um, thanks for reading, join my membership for free or whatever, you know, this could be, you know, this could be sign up to get my free ebook or whatever. Cause again, keep in mind when I sign up for this prospect list, I'm added to a mailing list as well. I can, I'm also, you'll see, I'm taken to a confirmation page after I sign up for this free membership level. So on that confirmation page, I can already start pulling them into my membership level. Say, here's your ebook right now delivered to you check out these other things, right? <clears throat> so it just opens up the door for you to offer them so much more than just um, signing up for an email list. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and publish this. And then go to an incognito window, copy link address. <clears throat> okay, so now we see you know, we've got our article content. And then at the very bottom, we have this air test. Um, Dirk. <clears throat> so when I sign up, this would take me to your membership site. Um, and on the thank you page, right? So this is just the default thank you page, but you can create a specific thank you page for people who sign up for a free membership level and put whatever you want on there to make it a more uh, seamless experience. Um, but now I was logged in. So now I could navigate the site as a member and, and start getting into that, right? So a lot more engaging than just signing up for an email list. And now I can see this person is in my membership area. And now there's so many opportunities I have um, as a membership site owner that I can use smart tags to promote to these people, et cetera. Um, so the last thing I'll just glean over <clears throat> uh, is also our social sign up, sign in feature, which is only on advanced plans and above. But basically um, you can also have people sign up, sign in with Facebook, Google, or LinkedIn. Um, and as a result of signing in, you, you specify, so for example, Facebook, when you're setting it up, you specify which free membership level you want them to get when they sign in using one of those social networks. So you can specify, um, you can even create different, yeah, I, I don't know why you would do this, but, you could create a free membership level for the different 
networks, right? If they're signing with Facebook, that'd be one thing. If they're signing with Google, that'd be another. That's a horrible use case. I don't know if anybody would ever do that, but I'm just saying what you are able to do is that when you um, you specify which membership level you want people to sign up, get uh, applied to their account when they log in with a social network, and then all you need to do to utilize this is copy this smart tag. Um, and then you go create a page, uh, you know, again, um, it could just be a piece of content, a landing page that people are coming to from one of your ads. Um, but then, you know, if you want to try and get them to with, without any sort of barriers to join your site, um, just throw on a, a Google or a Facebook uh, sign up button with one click, they can now be a member of your site. And, and this is what it looks like. Um, you know, just has the Facebook button and then, you know, it'll take them through. Well, I'm not in an incognito window, so I'm already logged in. But um, if I was in an incognito window, <clears throat> Basically, they read your content, they like it, they want to sign up. Oh, let me sign up, you know, and then it'll take them through the whole process, you know, um, to confirm with Facebook. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it on. Um, so you had a very official list of things to cover, and I, I got through the entire list. Um, so... Yep, that's it. So um, I hope everyone found this useful and uh, appreciate you all for joining. Now, nor we do office hours every two weeks. However, uh, two weeks from now, I'm going to be in the UK uh, going attending a conference for one of our customers that we're sponsoring. So we're not going to be doing um, office hours on the 8th of March. Um, the next office hours will be the 22nd of March. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Cynthia, but that's when I believe that they will be. Right. So March 22nd is when the next office hours will be. So hope to see you there. Good luck with everything. If you have any questions in the meantime, uh, you have our support center, you have our support team, um, and that's it. Thanks.